you, we're back with another episode of the Night Garcia podcast. With me today, I have Sharon Lechter. Sharon, thank you so much for being here with me. I, You have no idea this subject. It's so important for me, and I will tell you why. Uh, Sharon is an entrepreneur, a mentor, uh, but also specializes in financial education, right? Uh, and behind you, I see your next book, Exit Rich, uh, which is um, a book that is coming out in June, but we can pre-order it, and I will put everything out there uh, when this comes out on my website, everywhere, so everybody can have access to that. Sharon, you know, I am not from the U.S. And when I first, I'm an actor, and when I started working, I have a child, and I really wanted to start educating myself financially. And for the life of me, I couldn't find a place to start. And it was weird because, for example, I didn't know anything about credit, you no know, being an American. I didn't understand the system. I, I, I remember seeing people buying things and being able to afford things, but I couldn't understand how to understand the system. So when I heard you uh, for the first time and I kind of follow you and I start being educated with you, I was like, okay, this is somebody that definitely, this is a conversation, especially now during this pandemic, that things are changing so much for everyone financially. You are such a golden token right now to talk to. <laughs> And, and, and I think you have so much to give and, and, and having you here, by the way, is an honor. And I think that it's, it's a huge contribution uh, for everyone that is listening. So thank you for being here. Well, thank you. I'm delighted to be here. And I applaud you wanting to share this information with your, with your community because it's so important. You know, we don't know what we don't know. We're not being taught things about money in school. And so we learned from home and that's why the, you know, the comment, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer because they're learning at home. And so when we can start sharing financial education is when we can really level the playing field and make sure every child has an opportunity to succeed. succeed and you know what's succeed, weird? So. And you know what's strange is my son now, I had a child really young. He's starting college. He's in college now. And I remember in high school, I would ask him, Hey, are you guys learning about credit? And through him, I realized that this is not taught in education. I thought it was, I thought I was behind because I didn't go to school in the US, but it's actually a situation that we're living that it's not part of our school system, how to survive uh, financially. And it sounds like, like we should get it, but if what you don't know is what you don't know. So how do we start trying to educate ourselves financially like what where do we start with this because it's really overwhelming when you think about it <laughs> well the first place is to realize that um, most of us you know have a mindset of scarcity because we grew up at a time when we heard things like money doesn't grow on trees pinch your pennies so we grow up and we can't afford it so you grow up with this money negative money negative money negative and that creates this mindset of scar scarcity you're afraid you're never going to have enough and when you are successful you're afraid you're going to lose it but once we can acknowledge that where it came from um, we can actually start releasing it, realize we live in a world of abundance. And there's so much information. And right now it's harder to find the right information to make sure you're learning for people who have been there, done that. But there's lots of opportunities for people. They can, you know, I have lots of books out there people can read. I have this game over my shoulder called Thrive Time for Teens that I created to really help young people understand that the choices they make, not only how they spend their money, but how they spend their time will drive them to success or not. Mm -hmm. yes. And certainly the Rich Dad series that I wrote with Kiyosaki, um, 15 books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and 14 other books in that series. We talk about the mindset about around money. But it's really important for people to understand we're chasing time and money. And that's what keeps us back. We need to t invest our time in buying, building, creating assets. My favorite word on earth, assets. By buying, building, creating assets that generate income, that's how you start building wealth because those assets become your employees. And you can start at the age of five, and you can start, you know, or you can be 75, but you start understanding by creating these assets, they start working for you and you get your time back. That's incredible. And is this, do you think the world has changed when it comes to like making money? Uh, is it getting harder? Is it getting 
more challenging because when I think of like being financially stable, I always try to focus on my contribution to what I do. You know, I feel like the more you contribute, whatever it is that you do, whether you're a carpenter, an actor, or anything, even if you don't know what you're doing, just focus on contribution eventually will pay off. So, well, that's, you know, that's true. I think going the extra mile, being a giver, um, being in service to others is very, very important. But you know, for all the people out there that are employees, it's, it's not what, what you do for your money that determines your future. It's what you do with your paycheck. So it's not what you do for your paycheck. It's what you do with your paycheck. Okay. And so are you taking that paycheck and reinvesting it in yourself or are you spending it and letting it go away, saying goodbye to it? Mm-hmm. And so when you invest it and like every time you get a raise, every time you get a bonus, instead of spending it, let's invest it for your future. And all of a sudden you're going to start seeing the dividends. Yeah, because when you invest it in yourself, like doing seminars or or things that you can get better at, then you become more valuable. It will translate into finances, right? Or or in a case if you have children investing it in their in their in them, right? It's it's how you that's interesting. It's how the fact you that we're not teaching kids it. about money in school. Yeah, the fact that we're not teaching about children about money in school leaves it to us as as parents, as aunts, uncles, as concerned adults, to make sure our children have the information they need to not just survive, but to be able to thrive. And and really, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to money, you're either in control of your money or it's in control of you. There's nothing in between. And so if you fall into the category where you are in debt, money's controlling you, your quality of life is stifled because you're allowing money to paralyze you. So you need to start learning how to get, figure out how to get out of debt and how to start creating assets so that you can start living the life that you deserve. And this is the one when you start saying that just you have to stop digging in order to yes to start thriving. Yeah, if you're right? you know if you're in a big hole of debt, stop. The first step is to stop digging. And if you are trying to change your financial position, the first step is to figure out where you are. Most people have their head in the sands; they don't even really know where they are financially. And yes, the picture may be bleak. It may not be very pretty, but taking the action to just determine where you are financially will empower you because then you actually know where to go from there. Wow. You know, one of the things that I have learned, uh, I, I was overwhelmed every time I had to do my taxes. And funny enough, we're like, this March, we're, we're like tax time, right? It, it, it was overwhelming and I, I didn't know how to deal with that. And and I remember she reached out to my accountant and she told me, don't worry about it. Uh, we're just going to do QuickBooks and I will take care of it. Uh, and I was like, how, how can I do my own QuickBooks? And she's like, no, no, no. We got people for that. It costs like $80 an hour or something. And we can just seven hours. We, 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 we take care of it. And, and then I was like, no, I'm going to learn how to do it. And I had to go on YouTube. It took me like, what, 24 hours. I didn't know how to work that thing, but you know what? Now I do my QuickBooks every two months. <laughs> I'm up to date. It's, but then I reached out to her and I said, you know, it really bothered me that you never gave me the chance to do this myself. And you seem very surprised. And she said, well, everybody's afraid to look at their expenses. I assumed you were one of those people. And it really caught my attention because, um, when you're afraid to look at your expenses, you kind of know you're doing something wrong <laughs> in a sense. I mean, you kind of, and, and then you don't, and then how can you stop the digging if you don't want to look how big your hole is and how right. bad is your, your patterns that you have created for whatever reason. And, and I, and she told me straight out, she's like, everybody's afraid to look at their finances. They call me when they're in really big trouble. And they said to me, oh, no, 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 you deal with it. I don't, I don't want to deal with that. And I was so shocked. I, I still is like very shocking to me because it's like we have a, a, there's a separation between us and money. And there's something is that we don't want to deal with. How it's a very emotional it. subject. Yes, an emotional subject. And it so, is an emotional subject. Why is that? Well, I think that's because we've been grown up. We've grown in a time when money is scarce and oh. this mindset of scarcity. And so you, uh, that creates fear of money and that fear makes money very emotional. And it really is just wow. an exchange. 
you know, and as I said, if you allow money to control you, you're never going to have the happiness or the quality of life that you deserve. So you need to learn how to be in charge and take control and learn how to do those QuickBooks, but at least know where you are financially and what you can do to help create a better situation. It does make perfect sense why it, it, it's, it translates to, uh, to emotional because I, for me, it was very practical. I wanted to be educated. I wanted to know what can I afford? Uh, what can I not afford? Because then, you know, you, you have a bigger picture of that. But and, and people have different financial values. Some people, you know, they want to spend um, and they go, go into debt and they because they just want to look good. They want to make other people think that they're successful. Other people are concerned about security. And so they're very frugal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, part of it is getting back to understanding where you are financially. And when I work with couples, I, I have them go out on a money date and talk about how each of their parents, wow. um, what their habits were and what their thoughts were about money. And it usually gets to be pretty funny. But in doing that, they talk about their parents. It identifies issues that they themselves are dealing with as a couple. And so by but removing that by one generation and bringing a little humor, it allows them to find that common ground so that they can, because it's really, you know, finances are, is one of the, depending on who you talk to, number one cause of divorce. Yes. And it's because people don't talk about it and they don't talk about what their goals are together. They don't talk about expenses. You know, there's a, a very high percentage surveys taken about the amount of lying that one spouse will do to the other about what the money that they're spending. And that, you know, that is hard to build trust when you're doing that. So of course, how can you teach children to be, to, how can you educate them? And when do you start? Is it like well, from day one? <laughs> so I, that's one of my favorite questions because I say, at what age do you think a child knows the difference between a $1 bill and a $20 bill? Yes like three or four, they know the difference. So they know the spending power difference. They need to understand the earning power difference. And so um, in our world today with easy gratification, instant gratification, and um, we've kind of lost the art of getting our kids to set goals. And so the first step is when you're, we've I've just talked about us hearing from our parents, we can't afford it. And when you say that it closes your mind you actually want to kind of get under the covers. You're depressed. We can't afford it. Yes. But instead of saying that to yourself, say, how can I afford it? Because that opens your mind. It triggers that entrepreneurial mm-hmm. spirit. Yes. And you can come up with ways to earn what you want. That's vision board, that goal. The same applies to your children. Are you saying we can't afford it to your kids? And it might be Maria. It could be John. It could be you know Peter. And they're your kids and they want something. And you, see, you instantly say, we can't afford it. Well, catch yourself. And instead say, okay, Maria, John, Peter, how can you afford it? And they become very creative because that triggers our entrepreneurial spirit. And they come up with some very inventive ways to earn the money for what they want. But in the process... They've set a goal. They've come up with a process of solving that problem of not having enough money. They achieve it. They get the money, celebrate. They buy what they want. But in the the huge, the best benefit of all of that is in that process, you've seen their self-confidence grow. Mm -hmm. And in the world we live in today, we're wrapping our kids in bubbles. We're not letting them experience recovering from a mistake or setting a goal and achieving it and standing in in the glorious success of their own efforts. Mm -hmm. Too many parents talk about what they do for the kids instead of what they help their kids do for themselves. And it's very important. That is huge. I mean, that is a... That is one of the big loops that we have missed because, and just because we're not educated about it, like we, and then I, I love history and I read so much about the reason we're, we're so far behind with money is because we don't come from an abundance. Like you said, we come from war and the depression, especially in the U.S. And for those of us that come from another country, we, you know, we have to come here with nothing. So you're really starting in, you know, a new beginning with, not you know not understanding how anything works and 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 then raising kids too in a new world that <laughs> doesn't they don't teach them about how it works here so i i but what i really understood is that we're living in a world that there's something for everybody 
Uh, it's it's just how you go about it and and how you invest in yourself. You know, this whole self help. I call it also self investment. You know, like mm -hmm. it's it's like yourself helping yourself and self investing yours. I don't know if that's the correct word in English, but it's like you're like, you know, don't expect others to help you financially. Start at least check with ownership. something. Yeah, ownership. Check ownership. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about savings? How does that work in, in, in this world? Like, what do you do with savings? If, like, how can we put savings around our, you know, vision board when we are in scarcity, for example? Well, you either live below your means or you expand your means. And you do that by finding things to do on the side. Um, a lot of times today, it's ever, actually never been easier to increase your cash flow by becoming an affiliate for somebody that you believe in them, you believe in their products. You become an affiliate, you start promoting them, and you end up getting revenue from it. Or, or doing a side business while you're an employee to ways to raise more money. People renting out their rooms at Airbnb, they make more money. The issue is you believing in yourself enough to take action. I have something called the personal success equation. We talk about your passion and your talent, but most of us stop there. But true success, whether you're an entrepreneur or an employee, passion, your talent, times the association. Who do you have on your team? Who's supporting you? Who's driving you? Times A, taking action. And that's really a huge issue. So many times we know what we're supposed to do. We just don't do it. And then plus F stands for faith, having confidence in yourself, having confidence in what you're doing that is needed and necessary, and having confidence that you will succeed. And that personal success equation is the foundation of what I do with every single client I work with. And it's usually the power of association combined with that faith, confidence in themselves that they need the most work in. And they kind of go hand in hand. When you have the right people around you, your self-confidence soars. And I help people in both of those areas. My clients, I really work with them to get the stronger associations, new networks, opportunity to spread their message to more arenas, and in the process, also make them feel more confident about themselves. That's so nice. Sharon, as a woman, uh, being an entrepreneur, I, I really value your, you know, I mean, you've been, you've seen how the wheel rolls, right? And and you see it from from all kinds of um, angles. Uh, and obviously, we're living a very challenging time. And and I know you wrote a book called "Think and Grow Rich for Women." Uh, I did, and, and I love that. I I thought it was um such a beautiful contribution to to women out there. That's so beautiful. It's so brilliant. <laughs> Yay! Definitely, it's like a you know, it's like a beautiful um, kind of like a tool for women out there, for young girls too. That you know, that we become future mothers and future. You know, we we really take so much on our own, and you know, feeling that you can be financially stable, it's it's like changes your entire game. You become creative. Uh, you become. It's like you start. You know, without thinking that money is everything, it's just knowing that your family and your future is well, somehow... You, you stand in your own power. Exactly. You discover your own power. And and the, the thinker is for women. You know, the original book was released in 1937, and there were no women in business. And so when I was asked if I wanted to do this, I thought it was great. And I really Brilliant. honor Napoleon Hill's original work. I go through each one of the um, chapters on the steps to success. And I honor him. And then I t interview successful women who've used those principles to create their success. I talk about how I've used that principle in my own career. And then I have a lot of quotes from women. I have over 300 women that I honor in the book. And I love it because I did change it because in the original Thinking Grow Rich, it was all about money, okay? Um, how to create success and setting a goal, how much money you want to make when you want to make it. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that, but for women, I change it to success and significance because a lot of times when it's not so much about the money, but it's about success and being able to be confident and support your family and to instill that power of, of really empowerment in your own children. And it's so important because when we are the centers of our family, but we also Right now in the U.S., contain, we, we control over 60% of all personal wealth. So inherently, it's responsible to us 
to understand not only how to maintain it, but how to invest it, how to make it grow and employ it so it can support future generations for our families. Mm -hmm. And far too many women put their head in the sand or hide behind a man and expect them to take care of it. And so we have to stand up and, and learn the responsibility of how to take control of ourselves. Because so many times women don't understand that your credit score is not the same as your husband's. <laughs> and too many women end up getting divorced or their husband dies and they have no credit. Yeah. And it's, it's a tragedy it's a that does not need to happen. No. Just establish your own credit. So, that mm -hmm. you know, heaven forbid something should happen. Your spouse dies or you get divorced. Mm -hmm. At least you have the ability to stand on your own two feet. Yeah, which is which is so you know important if you have children and you can. I just love that you wrote that book for women because uh, it's 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 I read Think and Grow Rich. And I as much as I love the book, I didn't see myself in it. Uh, but then right after that, your book came out and, and for the first time I felt included, I felt, I felt supported and I, I, I didn't know I needed that support <laughs> to tell us all the book <laughs> because, you know, as a woman that you're trying to educate yourself, how, first of all, how to educate your child and also how to be able to afford support this child's education and well-being. It's, uh, it's crucial. And there's another thing that I feel, um, that it's important to talk about. And it's that, you know, we talk about this is a man's world and, and look at you, you're a woman living, you know, as an entrepreneur, like it, it's, it's, you know, your, your mindset, it's like very universal. It's like everybody can relate to women or men. And, and I think that's, uh, we need more Sharons out there <laughs> that could, that could really, you know, walk Thank the you. path and that <laughs> generations like me can say, no, there's, you know, we, we appreciate this and there's a point of reference of where, where, where I could be heading. There's a path that somebody's putting out there for, for us to, to also go and contribute and, you know, raising you. a That's boy. That's a great, great compliment. Thank you. It's a huge deal. I really wanted to tell you that, that that's the impact you're giving us because I talked to all the girls my age and we're like, this girl. Oh, because we also call you a girl. We don't like <laughs> this girl. It. This girl it. is killing it. <laughs> but you know, living in a in this what's so called a men's world, which I completely disagree. Maybe because I'm raised, I raise a boy that turned into a man. I I feel like, you know, every man has a mother, and there's no way they don't understand that we are here. And and when I listen to you, when I understand you, I feel like. Once we as women understand that we are part of this world as an entrepreneur, it's, it mm -hmm. says a lot. It, it has a, it has to start with us. It has to start with us making a decision that I, I exist. Um, I, I can contribute. I can have my credit. I can invest. I can do all these things that, that, uh, there's nothing stopping you. And I think right. we're living in a time that, we are having more opportunities for the first time ever, right? Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> you know, we've come a long way. One of the reasons I wrote Thinking Rich for Women was I was getting kind of tired of the dialogue. So many women complaining and criticizing the men that stood in their way and prevented them from creating success. And I said, you know, the law of attraction, when you're <laughs> spewing out negativity, you're attracting negativity. And I said, let's stop complaining and criticizing. Let's celebrate the progress we've made. Mm -hmm. Is there more to be made? Of course there is, but we have come a long way, baby. And so it's time for us to celebrate the progress we've made and to celebrate the men who have supported us along the way. Because it's not women instead of men, it's women alongside men. When we are both at the table, you're going to get the best of both brain power skills. And so it's so important for us. And that's really one of the essences of this book is so let's stop complaining, criticizing, let's start celebrating who we are, what we've accomplished, and we will accomplish more and more quickly if we start doing it from a place of celebration instead of criticism. Brilliant. Sharon, what what excites you now in this time that we're living as, as a woman, as an entrepreneur, when you work and what is what is that one thing that you're like, I'm curious about this. I want to put this out there. What excites you? Well, I think it's important to always um, 
be curious and creative. And so I have the opportunity to be around some pretty brilliant people. And I love it because it gets the brain firing. And so I really challenge everybody watching to pay attention to your environment and putting yourself in a position of highest and greatest potential. And I'm very excited about my new book, Exa Rich, because people, although there's so many entrepreneurs out there that never build a successful business. They have a successful business for a short time, but they haven't built the foundation and the value and they don't understand how to build. You can't build a house without going down first. And so this book really helps you understand how to build that, the system, this business systems, the legal foundation, the communications that help you truly take a successful business, making it sustainable scalable and saleable. And so I'm very, Inc. Magazine has partnered with us with this book and I really am excited. And I think every entrepreneur, in fact, Steve Forbes said, this is a gold mine for entrepreneurs because it helps you understand, yeah, it's a $25 investment for the pre-order. And if one thing helps you 10X, 100X, 1000X your business, it's well worth the investment. And it has tremendous amount of my experience as well as my co-author who's one top female business broker in the country. And it's just incredible amount of information to help you make the right choices and build that value and increase the valuation of your company. Wow. That's, and that comes out in June, but we can stop pre-ordered now. (laughs) Right. That's yes. Yes. Go to exitrichbook.com forward slash buy, and I'll send you the electronic copy right away. And then in June, we'll send you the hard copy. So you'll actually get two copies for the price of one. So That's incredible. <laughs> that's like, that's exiting rich right, right there. Yes. <laughs> that's what- providing value. And because I don't want people to have to wait till June to get the information. So I like to kind of, you know, uproot the publishing industry every once in a while. So this is one where you're going to get the electronic copy right away. So you can start adding value to your business and you'll get the actual hard copy in June. That's lovely. Uh, Sharon, when we talk about what's for you outwitting the devil, exactly, what is it? What is that concept for you? Well, Outwitting the Devil is the book that I was so honored to be asked. It was hidden away for 72 years. Napoleon Hill wrote it Actually, he released Think and Grow Rich in 1937, and he was frustrated because he says, even though people have this thesis of success, Mm -hmm. they don't apply it. And he added a chapter, The Six Ghosts of Fear, because he understood that fear is what holds people back. But he says, no, there's still so much more I need to communicate. And so in 1938, he sat down and wrote Outwitting the Devil, and it scared his wife to death because the name (laughs) she worked for the Presbyterian College. And she said, no, you can't publish it. So it got locked away for 72 years. And the month I released Three Feet from Gold, which was the first book I did with the foundation, um, they sent me the manuscript saying, we really need your input. I was probably only fourth or fifth person in the world to have read the manuscript because it was typed on a manual typewriter and Napoleon Hill had his handwritten notes in the margins. It was incredible. It's like I was having a conversation with him and I read it and it just kind of took over. I said, this has to get out. Because it's so, he takes on every taboo, sex, politics, religion, education, alcohol, cigarettes, I mean, everything, religion, um, and about how our whole lives are determined by things that happen to us as kids, um, where we've been impacted through fear. Um, Fear of, for instance, did you learn your religion through fear or through faith? And that one would just hit me between the eyes because I was literally lived. I was raised in the Southern Baptist church and the pastor on Sundays, fire and brimstone from the pulpit. You know, I learned my religion of fear through him, but the youth minister in the same church taught me faith or the love of God, love of Jesus. And so I, it was so impactful to me to understand that and realize so many of us um, have, a, have, have our subconscious has been impacted through fear And that fear holds us back and keeps us from experiencing the life that we deserve. And so in the book, we talk about the various ways to get past the fear, definiteness of purpose, mastery over self, understanding to learn from adversity, controlling your environment, your time, creating harmony in your life and using caution. All those are steps that he reveals. And 
So I had the honor of bringing that out. And it, his, his messaging, I didn't, you know, is there. My comments compare 1938 to the, to the current time because we really wanted to bring his messaging to the younger generation like you, like you many of whom don't know him, didn't know the title Thinking Grow Rich. So we wanted to open their eyes, particularly during this time of craziness that we've been experiencing the last few years. So what, that's exactly what this book does. It allows you to see the way that you can combat and overcome the fear that's been holding you back to create the life of prosperity, to create the life of impact that you deserve to be. Yeah, I think that the opposite of fear is abundance. Because once we have abundance, there's nothing to fear, right? Like it's, it's a, uh, well, that's, I think that's something I, 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 when I think what's the opposite of fear, oh, it's being free and, and being well, and faith, being, having faith. And when having you think faith. about fear, your, your head's down, right? Fear, usually you've got your head down and you don't see things that are right there. But when you can create and get rid of the fear, because fear either paralyzes us or motivates us. Most of us, it paralyzes us. But if you can see that fear as a way to motivate yourself, to turn from fear to faith, your eyes are up, you're open, you're looking up, and all those opportunities are still there. Wow. And that's the only way you can actually create and grow and exit rich, too. <laughs> right. It's like a, a full-on circle there. Yes, it is. Yes, it <laughs> that's is. so weird. I just put the dots together. Was that on purpose? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Outwitting the devil, exit or grow rich for women or men, and then you exit yep. rich. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Do you have other books that you have in mind? Uh, does these books come to you? You know, talking about your creativity, how do you keep that alive in you? How do you keep it um, going? It, well, usually a book comes for me feeling like something's there's something crazy in the world that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I've written 25 books, 26 books now. So I have two others. One's going to be related to real estate. One's going to be related to truly understanding how to how the mindset of business and the valuation of business go together. And so those are a couple of books that I'm going to be looking at uh, over the next year or so. But, yes. but of course, this one has got my focus right now, getting it out. That's nice. Uh, Sharon, when when people think of being an entrepreneur, some people, they just have this very negative, like not negative, they just, they just feel they cannot do it. What is really an, a definition of an entrepreneur? Because I don't want people to listen to this, to think like, oh, I'm not going to get this conversation because they talk about entrepreneurship. And what is that exactly? for you like well you can be an entrepreneur and still be an employee um you know you can be entrepreneurial which means you're very entrepreneurial within your position for your boss and um entrepreneurs successful businesses solve a problem or serve a need i think we have a few problems and needs in the world but one of the things that i always challenge myself is kind of my personal mantra from the moment i left public accounting many many years ago is the question why not why not do something different why not take the path less traveled why not solve a problem or serve a need and i think all of that is born in the level of curiosity and creativity not everyone wants to be or should be an entrepreneur a lot of people are very risk averse and they want to have a relatively simple, comfortable life. And they can, you know, and I don't tell people to quit their jobs if that's something that that's what their financial value is. But being entrepreneurial means you're trying to solve problems and you can do that inside your job or as a business that you start as well. That's so it shouldn't be something that scares people because I think of entrepreneurship as curiosity, curiosity and problem solving. Yeah. And we all have problems to solve everywhere all around us every single day especially now and uh and the, qu the question is learning how to monetize that and that's what you know that's what i help people do that's brilliant and do you think that nowadays with social media um do you think that we have more chances to monetize our our ideas, our curiosity. Yes, there's business. a lot of chaos. There's a lot of noise. So you have to really earn the right. 
Um, you know, and I always tell people as, as purchasers, as consumers, do your, do your homework, do your due diligence, because there's a lot of people out there selling a lot of courses that they've really never had success in. Mm -hmm. And so make sure you do your own due diligence and don't get talked into something because there's a slick sales pitch, but there it is. It, if you are an expert, everybody's an expert. Nobody's had your successes. Nobody's had your learning opportunities. And if you truly take from your heart and create something that can help other people going through what you've gone through um, and build the platform and create the using social media, using um, power of association, who, who has a community that could benefit from your message. It is, it has never been easier to build a thriving business online than it is today. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's true, and and I and I think we all have, we all have a story, and I I am an actor, and I I tell stories for a living. I I know, I understand that we all want to be entertained, but most of all, we want to connect. And and when I think of business, it's the same feeling. It's like you want to connect to either, you know, a person that is a mentor or or a project or a book or something like it's it's a it's a connection that we all desperately need and and i feel like with this world that it's like everybody is putting so much contact out content out there it's like you connect but you you start feeling losing the connection factor and 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 yes being an entrepreneur is that is the necessity to connect to resolve a problem to 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 and in your case is is a mentor that guides you toward you know issues that that you can resolve and and that's huge. Well, you you just said of something that's very important. Um, it's very important to have a mentor, and particularly in today's world when everybody's moving so fast, a mentor is going to help you um, get around the pitfalls. They're going to help speed your way to success, introduce you to their networks. And it's so important that each of you think about who has, who's created success in the arena that you want to be in. Um, mentorship programs within companies have helped people succeed and get uh, more promotions more quickly mm -hmm. because it gives you intel. It gives you the intel on, on how, you know, what's successful and what works. And so it's really important for each of you to think about who can I go to that can that I respect that can help me understand the fastest way to become more successful because they've been there they've done that and so mentorship is so very important. Yeah, and and mentors in in all kinds of areas of your life, not just like financially, mentor uh, and mentor. You know, a health like 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 understands the body, like understands diet. I understand it could be all kinds of mentors. I mean, we 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 don't have to just get one person that covers your entire life, <laughs> and also understand your weakness. Like if you, you know, if you feel like you're not really social and 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 just having a hard time trying to find a mentor that is, that deals with that kind of path. If you want to get ahead financially, you know. I find that mentor that covers that. I feel like uh, the straight line is from A. It's, it's the fastest way to get to the bottom is just straight. <laughs> Especially right. now right. that, that we are. And if anybody uh, wants information about you know our mentoring programs and what we do, just reach to my website, SharonLector.com. And we have a whole mentoring section and application for people that are interested in that. And then, of course, you can find me as Sharon Lecter on Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm. yes. Clubhouse. Um, mm -hmm. So you have the opportunity to to find me with whatever works best for you. So, do you do talks out there, Sharon? Do you do you do like chats? Uh, well, now with COVID, it, traveling is is complicated. Yeah, no, right? I'm, I I do a I I do a lot of speaking. I've been doing a lot, even more so with over Zoom and things. But yeah, I speak all over the world. Yeah, I, I figure. <laughs> if there's one thing, one message that you want to send to to you know the audience nowadays what would that be um, well you you are the ceo of your own life don't wait for the light at the end of the tunnel become your own beacon of light and stand in your own power and you will attract others to come and they'll light the light off of yours but be in control don't we can't control what's happening on the global level or the national level or even our state levels but you can't control what's happening in your own wallet take control of yourself and understand that 
no matter what you do for money, whether it's an employee or an entrepreneur, it's what you do with income and reinvest it in yourself through creating, buying, and building income-producing assets. And you will see that tomorrow will be better to, than today. So, But thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I appreciate that. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for this message. And thank you for everybody out there. I'm going to be putting all Sharon's information for you to follow up and, and exit rich. <laughs> That's just the best way to exit anywhere. <laughs> thank you so thank much, you. Sharon. I appreciate thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Take Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.